Welcome to another episode of MAN Quick Stop. I think most of us have sit on a bus before, but most probably not as a bus driver, but as a passenger. As you can see, I'm sitting in a bus right now, but this is not just any bus. This is the MAN Lions City E, a fully electric city bus. So the question of the day is, is e-mobility in public bus transport still a vision of the future or has it already become a reality? The most important thing when developing a new bus concept is the opinion of MAN's customers. I'm gonna be talking to a bus driver, a bus operator and an MAN expert to find out why and how this idea came to life. What can we expect from public transport in the future? Is it going to be fully electric or does it hold any other surprises? I'm gonna find out firsthand today. The world of urban public transportation is changing. More and more cities wanna move from low emission to no emission. But what does it mean for bus drivers transport operators and us passengers to build a fuel-free infrastructure. Bus driver and project engineer Tamara has been driving the MAN Lions CTE and I have the chance to talk to her firsthand. Hello Tamara. Hi, it's John. You're a bus driver. I'm a bus driver, yes, since eight years. What's the difference between you being an experienced bus driver between the combustion bus and now the new electrified bus? Well, actually there's no big difference. No? Because um, the way of operation, the buttons and the cockpit is almost the same of the bus. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference between the electric bus and fuel bus is the way of starting the bus. So you can't hear the engine anymore. And at the first time mm -hmm. I was a bit confused. So is the bus ready? Can I start to drive now? I guess it's so irritating, yeah. That's right. You were mentioning that the displays between the two buses are almost the same. Is there any difference in, uh, concern, concerning buttons? Well, there's one button which is different compared to the fuel bus. Mm -hmm. It's the disconnection of the high volt battery. In case of an accident, I need to disconnect the high volt battery yeah, because of the safety. There are a lot of cables, orange cables in the oh, yeah. bus. So if the fire breaks also, I need to disconnect the high volt. And that's, that's it for the bus driver. That's everything and you need I, to know. Mm -hmm. Amazing. From the engine, is there a difference? It's almost the same, but if you want to accelerate the electric bus, mm -hmm. it's more smooth, it's more oh, yeah. quickly than mm -hmm. the fuel bus. And if you hit the brakes, mm -hmm. is there a difference to a normal combustion engine? Well, there's not a big difference, so you have to brake smoother. You need to save more energy for the electric bus to have more um, state of charge. Ah, does, does it mm -hmm. recuperate? Yeah, the bus does recuperate. So if you, if you drive smart, you save mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Yes. And were you afraid about, you know, the aspect of range? Um, it depends on the temperature mm -hmm. and on the weather. Mm -hmm. So in winter, it could consume more energy. Talking about safety, which aspects are very important for you? The emergency brake system. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea because if somebody goes in front of the bus, uh, some passenger or pedestrian, the system recognizes it and signals, okay, um, there's a danger and the bus brakes immediately. Yeah. You know what? Later on, I'm going to meet Victor from MAN. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to pass on your idea to him. Oh, that would be a great idea. Well, Thank you. <laughs> I wonder what were the reactions of the passengers? Well, they saw the bus and said, okay, wow, it must be a new bus because it's very quiet and yeah. the design is completely different than the fuel buses. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, there are big issues, the carbon problem, protection of the environment. Yeah. So people, I think they rethink their mobility. And let me ask you, between you professionals, are they all like you that they think, okay, electrified buses is the future or is there some skeptical what? voices as well? <laughs> Yeah, there are some skeptical voices because they said oh, a bus needs the diesel because mm -hmm. of the range and the bus mm -hmm. is on the street the whole day. But um, <laughs> that's uh, tricky because if they drive the mm -hmm. electric buses the first time, mm -hmm. they see, oh, it's okay, the driving, it's very nice. So oh, yeah. they like driving the electric <laughs> bus. <laughs> so from your opinion, to switch to electrified buses is not just a vision of the future, but maybe something that is already happening and it's not too early? 
it's not too early and now we should begin to buy more electric buses, to drive more electric buses, to get the young experience to say, okay, the electric bus is the future. So when is your next shift? Next Saturday. Ah, I'm, I'm gonna hop on your bus. I'm gonna sit in the very back because that's where the cool guys sit, right? Yeah, that's right. I hear sure. music very loud. And I'm gonna bring my own music. Well, I hope you have a good taste. Okay, sure, thank you. <laughs> thank you, John. Drive safe. Thank you. To bring the power of electric mobility to European cities, MAN has created the Electrifying Europe Roadshow. This started in 2020 and is returning this year. MAN wants to electrify the transport operators and give them the chance to see all the benefits of this electric movement. MAN Truck and Bus is also supporting this on its online channels under the hashtag electrifying Europe. 78 stops in 15 European countries. Check out the hashtag on Instagram. Hansia Belgium is a big part of it. The bus has already been operating there since February 2021. Let's give Mario a quick call and find out how it's going. Hello Mario. Hi John. You are testing a MAN Lions CTE already. You're one of the first, right? That's uh, that's correct. Yes. In 2019, we started an evaluation of two lines we operate in the city of Antwerp, mm -hmm. in order to move from diesel to uh, zero emission uh, buses. What is your motivation now? Uh, this line city E project gives us the opportunity to gain experience in the operational costs of an electric city bus, and uh, we can therefore rely on our partnership with uh, MEN for the assistance and for the support. We are the biggest private operator in the Flemish region of Belgium. Yeah. Hansea, uh, our company, wants to take a leading role in the transition uh, to green transportation. What are the challenges in that change? Our biggest concern was an operation without changing the timetables, because we have to take into account the charging time uh, and the radius of the vehicle. Talking about the charging process, does it have any impact on your schedule? No, uh, actually not. The battery capacity is large enough to, to do the same work as the diesel buses before. And how long does it take you to charge a bus? Currently, we are using a depot charger of 55 kilowatts, which is largely sufficient for overnight charging. But in the near future, we will uh, install a bigger char uh, charger of 180 kilowatts, and then the charging time will only be a few hours, three hours, or something like that. But therefore, we need to uh, adapt the power lines from uh, the grid. Ah, interesting. But you're working on this because this is going to be the future. Exactly, yeah. Well, that sounds quite positive. With electrifying public transportation, especially buses, there's always the question of range. What are your experiences so far? The vehicle is in operation since uh, February, so we are still in an early stage. It is operated on different lines which, with uh, different drivers and making between 150 and 230 kilometers per day and making shifts of over 10 hours. And we're talking winter conditions, which is cold and slippery roads and so on. Yeah, we had, we had already some uh, few cold days in February, but we didn't notice a huge impact on the battery state of charge. Okay, yeah, that sounds promising. As far as I can see, the average uh, consumption is below one kilowatt per kilometer. Wow. When you were planning switching from uh, combustion to electrifying, did you have any considerations about uh, the challenges that were coming up and uh, who could assist you? For this new e-bus, we can rely on the services of, uh, of MAN. Oh. And there's another thing also, uh, meanwhile we can train our own technic technicians uh, in the MAN training center. What is your best scenario for the future, your plans for, for switching from combustion to electrifying. Actually, the public transport in Belgium should be full electric or zero emission in uh, 2035. Ah, so you need more electrified buses. Yeah, of course, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Mario, and all the best for, the, for going electric in Antwerp and everywhere else. Okay, thank you for calling, John, and uh, stay safe. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. I talked to a bus driver, I talked to an operator. And last but not least, I'm going to talk to Victor from MAN to get his thoughts as part of the company leading its way to e-mobility. Hello Victor, nice to have you here. Hey John. You are with MAN, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm working for the sales department mm -hmm. and I'm working closely with the engineering department uh, to develop new buses. My focus is actually to have a lot of discussions um, with our sales staff, yeah. but also with the customers. On the one hand, to define the requirements for our buses. And then, of course, to have the discussions with the engineering department on the other hand to develop the buses. So what are uh, the, the most important uh, feedbacks that you've gathered? Um, there were actually three main topics, three main concerns. It was the range, 
it was the ease of use and of course uh, passengers comfort. The most important uh, question and topic that we actually had here was the requirement to have a consistent range um, over the entire lifetime of the battery. So we're we talking years? Our goal or our approach was to put as many batteries in the bus as possible. In our case, it's six batteries on the solo bus. That gives actually the bus uh, operators the opportunity to drive about 270 kilometers. 270? Under, yeah, 270 under favorable conditions and 200 kilometers under realistic harsh conditions. Talking about electrifying Europe, you presented these brand new buses in 78 cities in 15 countries. What was the feedback? The feedback was absolutely amazing from the operators, the passengers and of course from the bus drivers. For example in Belgium actually we had a small competition going on even uh, between the bus drivers and the goal was to get as far as possible with the least energy consumption as they could actually achieve. Yeah. And the feedback was really great. After 150 kilometers of driving we still had a capacity in the batteries of over 55 percent meaning that our vehicle can easily reach those 270 kilometers or maybe even go beyond what I've been talking about before. Amazing. So you can charge the whole bus overnight, but what if you need the bus early in the morning? Oh, that's really easy. So the charging time is really short. For the solo bus, it's only three hours. A man, actually, we even have a service, the so-called e-manager. There you can actually track the status of the batteries yeah. and you can even program when you want to depart, meaning that you can optimize the charging procedure. So you were mentioning range, usage, is there anything else? Passengers comfort. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, the really important part for us was to create a lot of space in the vehicle. And we achieved this by leaving out the engine tower. And if we don't have an engine tower, what do you believe? Where are the batteries located? Six batteries? Yes, six batteries. Well, I guess in the front or in the back or maybe in the floor. No, no. They're actually on the roof. For us, it was actually the easiest way because for the service, of course, it's really easy to reach the batteries. But at the same time, uh, this makes the vehicle really safe. If you have an accident, the really expensive parts, the batteries, are really far away from the crash zone. And at the same time, the passengers are not affected by batteries or anything at all. Wow. Okay, John, so we've been talking about the specs of the vehicle. What do you believe? Where is the engine located? Uh, well, front, back, back. Yeah, exactly. It's in the back, underneath the four seats that we additionally put into this vehicle because we left out the engine tower. Cool. And that results actually in a total capacity of 88 persons for the solo bus and of course we have also an articulated version coming up. So the longer version? Yes, exactly. Starting from April 2021, we are going in serial production of the 18 meter version and there we will offer even more space to the customers. We are actually giving out the promise to transport 120 people with the articulated version. We will have two more batteries leading of course to the same result, the range of 270 kilometers in favorable conditions. So John, we've been talking about the charging time of the solo bus. Three, Three hours? hours? Yeah, mm -hmm. you remember. What do you believe? How long does it take to, to charge the articulated version? Well, I guess at least one or two hours more. It's only one hour more, so four hours in total. I had the chance to talk to a bus driver before and a very important question was, will there be an emergency brake assistant? It's a good question, John. We actually have something um, similar already today in our buses. It's called Active Warning Turning Assistant with a blind spot rec recognition and a pedestrian recognition. This system does not brake automatically yet, yeah. but this is something that the MAN is working on currently and that we will present in the next couple of years. Do you think uh, riding a bus is going to become more easy in the future? Absolutely, I really do believe that it will become easier. But to be honest, um, I made the driving license myself just you last did? year. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and from my own experience, just for the, from the first couple of months, riding a bus is really complicated. It's really hard. You have to take care of the passengers, of the traffic. You need to take care pretty much of everybody out there. And to each bus driver that is driving the buses every single day, there is a high respect from my side. It's not as easy as you would think. Wow, interesting. Victor, are you working on the next generation of uh, e-mobility in the bus sector? Of course, the work on these buses never stops. So we are working actually on the next battery generation. In 2025, we are going to introduce a new battery generation. So the range of this bus will be up to 400 kilometers. And uh, that was the technical aspect. Do we uh, so, uh, or have all ideas uh, for, for the interior design? Well, the interior design is already nowadays really futuristic. I was talking about the ambient light, for example, about the big windows, the uh, lights in general. You can equip the bus with USB plugs and so on. So there is a USB lot of like yeah, USB plugs. 
So there is a lot of infotainment system and so on already today, and I think the future is already here. Uh, the main question is rather what will be the ranges in the future, yeah, and how we will be uh, achieving those ranges. We totally believe in battery electric vehicles, meaning that our city buses will be always driven with batteries. When it comes down to all the other buses, for example, the intercity use and the coach market, that's where the interesting question starts. Ah, the even longer ranges. The even wrong, longer ranges, exactly. When you want to drive 600 kilometers and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is something that MN is already thinking about today. And do you think in the future, the image of bus, riding a bus, will change like because of something hip to do? Absolutely. So I believe that more and more people will switch over to, to buses and public transportation, especially when uh, buses in general will become quieter and calmer, brighter and more comfortable. My Victor, thank you for this information and thank you for electrifying the future. Sure, John. Thank you very much for having me here. Can't wait to hop on. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. How about you? Did you already ride an e-bus? What do you think about alternative engines in general? What are your ideas about riding a bus in the future? I could imagine uh, even more comfort or entertainment systems. Let us know about your experiences and about your visions in the comments below. The question was, is e-mobility in public transport still a vision of the future or is it already a reality? Well, after all these interesting talks and information, my conclusion is the future is already happening. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.